Well, over the past decade, Oklahoma's prison population increased by 15 percent, while spending on corrections grew by over 40 percent. And while our state's violent crime rate has dipped, it was only by 4 percent. Now, such rising costs with diminishing returns has some state leaders questioning whether we can afford to keep on the path we've been on. Joining me now is our Andy Barr. Well, Rob, while Oklahoma's crime rate is falling, prison rates are rising much faster. It's a dilemma for state leaders that impacts both state and local budgets and has some reimagining how we approach our criminal justice system. From our earliest days, Oklahoma has long been a law and order state. It's part of our lore. But Oklahoma County's top lawman says it may be time to take a different approach. Violent crime that, that we really do incarcerate too many people in this state. David Prater is the district attorney for Oklahoma County and says Oklahoma ranks first in the nation when incarcerating women and third when incarcerating men. Rankings Prater is not happy about. At some point we're going to have to stop looking at building additional prison beds and really start looking at investment of those dollars on the front end of a person's life. Money issues aside, what are some developmental ways we can change children's lives to maybe help curb um, criminal activity in their future? A child's brain develops at such a rapid rate from birth, well actually from conception, to age three. And I think where we miss the boat a lot of times, we start looking at children after they enter the education system. We need to be involved in their lives early, early on. What affects children is having a good nuclear family where they're loved, they're treated appropriately, fed and clothed the way that they should be. I mean, those simple things that sound so simple to you and me are exactly the things that a huge uh, percentage of children never know. Hello, and Prater says to work to decrease prison population actually starts a generation before. You can draw a line basically from the birth of certain children if you look at the demographic and you look at the environment that they're born into. You can almost draw a line directly from that child to prison. And we've got to find a way, you know, to be proactive and, and, and intervene in that child's life before it becomes, you know, too late and we get them on a path that they're, we're not going to be able to alter at all. So. But at some point, we'd be, we've got to begin to readjust money from the back end of people's lives, meaning incarcerating them at older ages, to the front end of their lives, to when they're children, when we can actually make a change in their lives. A change that would eventually reduce the cost of prisons by putting fewer Oklahomans inside this prison gate. It's an investment this tough as nails prosecutor says would allow first-time offenders to be sentenced to rehabilitation rather than incarceration. But the question still remains, will it work? These are not gonna be quick answers. You know, we're not gonna know what, what the effect of any given reform is gonna be until a number of years down the line. Um, but what we do know works, uh, based on our experience with therapeutic courts, is that those people that would otherwise go into the prison systems for drug or alcohol driven crimes, um, if we send them into an intensive uh, program, a thera therapeutic type program, that those do work. And what we've learned is that, you know, we're at, at cost to incarcerate a person in this state right now anywhere between eighteen and twenty-three thousand dollars. Our therapeutic court programs like, like DUI court and our, our drug court programs are they cost about five thousand dollars a year. So you have that comparison in cost, that savings in cost, but not just that. A person who successfully completes the drug court program in Oklahoma County is about five times less likely to reoffend than a person that was incarcerated for the for the same offense and is just released back into society with minimal uh, counseling and minimal treatment. Talk to me a little bit about the therapeutic court programs and, and how they work and what all they offer. The way the legislature set, legislature set up the drug court program in Oklahoma was they wanted it to be a prison diversion for people who have been involved in drug or alcohol driven crimes. Those are serious offenses, but we do know that 
um, as the legislature set it up, they said, we want people who otherwise would go to prison for these crimes to go into these therapeutic courts and receive very intensive treatment and very strict supervision for a period of time uh, normally about three years. Hopefully we will see that when that person completes that program after the three years that they have been able to um, uh, avoid using drugs or alcohol and again uh, set their life on a different path hopefully. A path leading to freedom of addiction rather than bars and razor wire. Well, Andy, I find it interesting that a man that has spent his entire career putting people behind bars is now working so hard to keep people out of prison. Well, Rob, first and foremost, Mr. Prater will tell you that they are focusing on nonviolent offenders for these rehabilitation and prevention programs because he has seen firsthand the cyclical nature of crime and punishment that spans throughout generations. All right. Thank you, Andy. Interesting report. Now, when we return, I sit down with Oklahoma's Speaker of the House to talk about work underway to reinvent Oklahoma's criminal justice system.